Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and in this mini Unity tutorial we are going to learn what player prefs are and how to use them. Don't forget, click the subscribe button and click on the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial that I upload to my channel on video game development as well as reviews and general questions as well as games that you guys make. With all that in mind, let's get to work. So let's start by answering the question, what are player prefs? So if you're new to Unity, or at least you've been using it for a little while, but have heard the term or are unsure what the term actually is, player prefs are a great way of storing information outside of a live Unity environment. So for example, we can use player prefs to save information even after the engine has been closed or even the built application of the game that you have made. So let's say we go into somewhere, let's say, this little house here and it changes like we've just gone inside here and a number one should appear on screen it does perfect we close the game and then when we reload it that number one is still on the screen so that is a way of saving the information that we've just got in the game and then reloading it once we load the game back up so the example I'm going to use in all of this is at the moment if I press play there is a text box on my screen that currently just says text. There's no scripts to this, no nothing. All this is, is just a scene with a camera, a canvas and a text box. That's all this is right now. So what we're going to do is we are going to change that word text to, let's say, a number. And then we're going to load that number whenever we start the game up again. So if you've used player press before, you'll know how all of this works. Uh, but I'm going to show you a little trick towards the end of this to quickly alter a few things and clear everything. So let's start by creating a simple script. I'm just going to call it play pref script just for something quick and easy. So obviously all of this is done via C sharp. Um, it's pretty much the only way that you will be able to deal with player prefs. So what we're going to do is we're going to set a value first of all. So let's start by saying when void start occurs, so i.e. when the script runs for the very first time, we could say player, not playing, player prefs dot set. And then you've got the option of float, integer or string. Obviously the float is a decimal, the integer is a whole number and the string is, well, it could be text. So for example, you could save some text that says, hello, my name is Jimmy. So to do this, what we say is in brackets and quotes, we can then declare the name of the player pref. And this can be anything. You can literally name a player pref anything. You can think of it as an internal file. So let's call it my player pref and that is in quotes and then after that you need to put a comma and then whatever the value would be so as soon as we have it as set float let's just have this as 1.234 and then f and then close bracket semicolon so what's happening here is once that line of code runs it's saving this number inside this theoretical file called my player pref so if we were to save that script now and head back into Unity, let it compile for just a second. Now, this is the key. You have to make sure that this file is indeed attached to the scene. So I'm just going to attach it to a brand new game object. Drag and drop. And we can see here the script is there. There's no variables, so don't need to worry about that. And if we press play now, even though this text won't actually change, what it means is that that player pref has now saved. How do we know it's saved? Well, what we can do is we can place another line down here and we can say player prefs dot get. And then you'll see float, integer, string. Now, obviously, you have to make sure that the type matches. If you've saved a player pref as a float, you can't get it as a string or an integer or anything like that. It's always best to just make sure that you match the type correctly. So in this case, all we need to do is in there, we put the name of our player pref. So my player 
pref. Now what I usually do like to do, even though I haven't done it here, is copy and paste the actual value of that name. So rather than just type it like I've done, you may be better copying and then pasting just so you don't get any typos. And then semicolon. So this won't really do much as it stands. We need to know what the actual value is. So let's actually declare it as a variable. So at the top, let's say public, so we can see it in the inspector panel. Uh, so public and float, and we'll call it loaded player pref with a semicolon. And then that means that here we can now put loaded player pref equals whatever in is inside that player pref. Now, so as we don't get mixed up and confused and, you know, we don't think this works correctly, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to annotate out that line. That means that this line of code will not run. Now, if all this works, the player pref should already be 1.234. So let's resave that script. We can head back into Unity and we should see the variable appear here as zero. Remember at this point, we haven't declared what this value is, but we should be able to load that value of 1.234 when we press play. And there we have it, 1.234. And it all goes without saying that if we change it, it will change here when we reload it as well. So if we annotate out the loading line so it doesn't load, and let's rehab this line again, so we've got our player prefs, and let's have it as 9.876. Resave. And now when we press play, it will overwrite our original value. So it's something you always have to be careful of. Whenever dealing with player prefs, you can easily overwrite things. So it's already overwritten at this point. The 1.234 doesn't exist. Now here you can see that this is still zero, that's because the line is annotated out. But the player pref will have just been set to 9.876. And we should be able to see that if we get rid of that line and re-add this line. So we're now saying that we need to get whatever value is in that player pref. And remember, it should have changed to 9.876. So if we press play, there we go, 9.876. So how do we get it to display on our screen where it says text? Well, to do that, we need to add in something at the top with the namespace. We need to put using unity engine.ui semicolon, obviously because we're dealing with some UI elements. Now, beneath where we've loaded our player pref, let's say that we need to add a variable, or rather we need to add a variable to have it on screen. So it's gonna be below here, but we need that variable first, I should say. So we'll have public, uh, game object, and screen UI, semicolon. I'm just gonna get rid of that annotation. We don't need it. So here we can say screen UI dot get component, and in spiky brackets, text, oh, close bracket, dot text equals, then we'll have the double quote just because it's expecting text and our value that we're going to be adding is currently a float, so a number, so it'll get a bit, get a bit confused. But either way, we just need to put double quote and then the loaded player pref, semicolon and save. And now what will happen, once again, it will load in the, that value here of 9.876 and display it on the screen. So if we press play, as soon as this is done, or rather add the text over here, and then press play, it should say 9.876 at the top. Perfect, so we've loaded a player pref and displayed it on screen. Now, this is how you can quickly erase every value of a player pref. If you go to edit, and all the way down here, third one up, you should see clear all player prefs. And obviously it will give you a warning, uh, can't be undone. It means it will reset all your player prefs. Yes. So now if we press play, we should load absolutely nothing. Exactly. Perfect. So once again, if we get rid of 
those two lines of code and change this and we'll have this as 5.842 save it will obviously just run this line of code so it won't display on screen just yet so remember that first line of code is saving the value into the player pref good and now if we stop that line of code but run the other two once again we should be able to see that it loads in the value and displays it on screen. So remember, there's always two sides to player prefs. There is the saving side and loading side, and you can use them for something really cool like a saving and loading system. They are incredibly easy to use for things like auto save and just randomly saving a little bit of information that you want to reload. For example, how many coins you've collected over the course of your gameplay and you need it to repeatedly save. It's awesome for things like that. And obviously, I know we've only dealt with a float here, but if we change that to an integer, and instead of saying get in, get float, if we had get int as well as set int, we'd be able to use it that way. So in this case, let's just have it as five. And as the last example, if we save that script, head back to Unity, remember now it's expecting an integer not a whole number and it would be the exact same with string it's expecting text value so it's now saved that number five and finally if we run the code to load it will load that number five and display it and there we go so like i said remember Saving and loading are the two sides to player prefs. It, you can't really have one without the other because it just will not work. So I hope that's helped you guys learn a little bit more about player prefs, what they can be useful for. If you want to know any more, let me know in the comments below. There is endless possibilities that you can have with player prefs and infinite things you can save theoretically. Just remember that they always will overwrite. Uh, you'll never ever get any warnings to say, do you want to overwrite? It will just automatically do it. So. Hope that's helped guys and hopefully I'll see you around in another one of my videos. Thanks very much for watching guys.